Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Hi, welcome to the another video on Kotlin collections. In the previous video, as the part of grouping, we have already gone through some of the functions. If you have not seen it, please go and watch the previous video. This is just a continuation of the same concepts, just that we will go through the remaining functions which we could not cover because of the paucity of time. So let's get into a demo. In the previous video, we basically ended it with the value transformation function where we created a custom key called as major and a custom key called as minor and we added the values which satisfy that particular age condition that is anybody who is of age greater than 18 and anybody who is of age lesser than 18. Before I go to fold and reduce, let me show you another example of transformation people dot group, group by key selector here i can create my own custom key so what i can do is it dot first name then add it dot age that would be the key and then i can write value transformer once again it's up to me what i want to decide here so in case it would be something like it dot first name append it with it dot last name so in this case, it will be a map which is customized according to this particular logic. And then if I just write for each print it dot key and then followed by it dot value. Let me just comment it out. And now if you see the output, you will see that now we have really a very customized key value pair. This is first name plus H appended together that has become the key and the value is value transform function that we have written here. So it's up to totally for you to decide what this key value pair could be and that is the advantage of writing this value transformation function on a group by. So in case if you felt that this was of not much significance that's not the case it's really useful function so let's proceed further now what we will look at is called as fold so let me just show you how the fold would look like let's assume that i want to add all these people's age into a value and see what is the total age of the whole group then what i can do is i can write a fold function now how do i do that so people dot fold and when you fold you have to write a initial value for the accumulator accumulator is the variable which will hold the value so that is zero initially i want to calculate the sum so of course it would be a initial value of zero accumulator should be zero and then i will write a trailing lambda accumulator and person these are the two values and what i will do is accumulator plus person dot h and what i just wrote is a fold function and if you observe it takes a initial value and that initial value is held in this accumulator and then the second argument is the individual item in the collection so in this case it is a person and i am basically adding this person's age to the accumulator and it basically goes through a kind of a loop and keeps adding the age to the accumulator and in this case when i say fold it traverses the collection from left to right there is also a another function called as fold right which is exactly similar to the same in this case i am just doing a sum so whether you sum from left to right or right to left shouldn't really matter now what i will do is i will print this total sum of people's age this is going to give me the total age of all the people i can do with another mechanism also so let me create list of numbers list of integers and let me some add some number here and print ln list of numbers dot old initial value is zero and then i want to write a trailing lambda and what i can write is accumulator i and it would be accumulator plus i and if i just print this sum of all numbers that will be the sum of all numbers you can write whatever that you want instead of this if you want to say multiply and keep multiplying it you can do the same it is up to you what function that you want to do here so this would be a product of all the 
numbers but of course in this case initial value cannot be zero it has to be one because if you start with zero everything will be zero so you can see that it's going into negative because the number is going to be very huge so i can just reduce the numbers that are there in the list and if i run this you will see that a much reasonable value now what you can do with fold you can also do with reduce so let me show you that print sum by reduce function how this will look just observe list of numbers dot reduce accumulator i and then i plus accumulator and if i run this you are getting the same result now you will feel that what is the difference between this fold function and reduce function well if you observe in the fold function you gave a initial value which is zero but if you don't need a initial value and you want to directly use a accumulator and a element in the collection instead of i i can write element here just to make it explicitly clear the accumulator will be the first element that is 12 and element will be the second element 34 so that will be the starting point of parsing of your reduce function in, but in case of fold the accumulator is initialized with the value 0 that you give to the fold function and then i will be the first element so that is why it will be like 0 plus then keep on adding each element in the list but in this case that is in case of reduce you don't give the initial value to the function you directly start with the first and second element of the function so in the same way i can write the same product using reduce so what i will do is reduce and accumulator plus i and here it will be the product and i don't have to provide one like i provided it here in case of fold now if i run this you should get the same product so that is the way you work with fold and reduce and once again you have a reduce right just like you have a fold right there is no left because by default it is always from left to right the parsing is always from left to right but if you don't want to do that then of course you can do the reduce right or fold right the last one more thing that i want to talk about is some of the commonly used aggregate functions they are like min max sum average and count so how would i do that so let me just print over here sum of all numbers instead of writing all these reduce or say fold functions all i could have written was list of numbers dot sum and that would have given me the same result and in the same way i can write average using average function and that would have given me the average of all the numbers i want to know what is the minimum of this so i can write mini mum among all the numbers list of numbers dot min i think min seems to be deprecated in the list at kotlin so you can use min normal i mean what it does is if there are no min numbers then it will return me a null of course i have a min number in this case so you will get some number so in this case it is two and in the same way you can write maximum that is max or null that is going to give me the maximum element in the whole collection that is 97 in this case and then finally i want to probably print total number of elements that is list of numbers dot count that will give me the size of the collection of course you can write directly size that is also going to give you pretty similar but size is different what we are talking about here is a aggregate function called as count so these are the some of the very commonly used functions aggregate functions with collections so that's it for now in the next video we will move on to the next topic that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye